Hey everybody, another fun video today from Johnny Guru. This time we're going to talk about this cable. This is a PCIe cable, okay? And the PCIe spec says that each of these connectors with these six plus two can only support 150 watts. Actually, hold on. What the spec actually says is that if the graphics card needs more than the 75 watts that the old spec, all right, the old spec had in it, then you put these two sense pins on here, and the graphics card says, oh, I am being powered by a power supply that is capable of supplying up to 150 watts on this cable or on this connector, okay? Has nothing to do with the capability of the cable, the, you know, the wires, the, the terminals, the, the actual connector, nothing. But everybody seems to think that this one little, you know, not even an eight pin, but really technically it's a six pin uh, connector can only do 150 watts. Truth be told, each of these connectors, even if you use really cheap parts, you're still gonna be able to, develop, uh, to, to deliver over 250 watts per connector and still be within spec, still be within ATX spec. And if you use decent parts, which most of the power supplies out there that you buy, I mean, unless it's like some really weird brand from, you know, God knows where, you know, like you order on Alibaba. Um, most of the PSUs out there are using parts that are capable of producing or, or supporting rather almost 350 watts per connector. So when somebody is trying to sell you a cable and they're like, this cable supports 600 watts, they're probably not lying to you. And I'm going to show you how that works. So you see on the top of my dry erase board here that I have written Minifit. That's what Molex calls these uh, connectors and terminals. It's a trademark name. So you're only gonna see Minifit when you are using Molex. And honestly, most people aren't using Molex. They're a great product, but a little expensive. So you have other companies out there like Amphenol, uh, 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 HYM, LST, um, Lotes, um, Astron. You know, there's a million of them <laughs> almost. It seems like there's a million of them. But so if you want to find a, a spec sheet easily, though, you, you know you're looking at a mini fit terminal. And if you want to look at the ones, like I said, the better power supply companies are using, or I'm, I'm not even going to say the better, I'm just going to say the majority of the power supply companies are using. Um, the part number for that terminal for 16 gauge, uh, which, which is 16 or 18 gauge, it supports both, um, is going to be 44476 um, 001. Okay. If you pull up that part number, you're going to see that that terminal supports 12.5 amps each. That's a lot of power. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a catch, sorry. Uh, each terminal supports 12.5 amps when used by itself. So anyway, so if you, if you have dual row, and let's say we're talking about, say, a six pin like this, okay? They're all delivering current. They're all creating heat, and the heat creates resistance. So the manufacturers, they know that you're not going to be able to do, you know, 12 and a half amps and stay within spec when the connectors are all grouped together like this, right? or the terminals are all grouped together like that in a connector. So they have specifications that state that if you're using a 2 by 3 or a 2 by 4 configuration, that instead of 12 and a half amps, each terminal supports 10 amps. And of course, the more terminals you have, uh, the lower this number goes. For example, um, 10 to 12 uh, connectors, like, you know, 2 by 5, 2 by 6, um, this drops down to 9 amps, and so on, okay? But we're talking about a 6-pin connector. No, I'm not talking about an 8-pin connector. I'm talking about a 6-pin connector. Still 6-pin, because you have 6 power conductors, and you have 2 cents. So 6-pin connector, 2 by 3, 10 amps. Wouldn't matter anyway, because a 2 by 4, they don't derate it anymore for a 2 by 4. So, like, for example, your EPS-12E connector for CPU power, still 10 amps okay um, difference being is this is going to be 10 amps by three for PCIe whereas for the CPU it's 10 amps by four okay but we're talking about PCIe today so it's 10 amps by three okay now you could take that 30 amps that that comes out to and you can multiply it by 12 and get 360 watts right easy math but you don't want to do that because that's not worst case scenario right um, you don't ever want to multiply it by nominal voltage because you have a spec that says that voltage can drop down to 5%, uh, below 5% or un 
can drop as much as 5%. And if that happens, your voltage is actually, we know what this is, 11.4 volts. Okay. And it's always best to test at worst case scenario because, of course, as voltage goes down, you know, your, your wattage here, right, I'm going to put a question mark for now, S times volts is wattage, of course. We, I think we all know that. So if you're trying to maintain the same wattage and your voltage drops, the current goes up. Okay? So that's why we always use worst case scenario here. So we're using 11.4 volts, which means we're still within ATX spec and the maximum capability of the terminal. All right? And that comes out to what? 342 watts. 30 times 11.4 is 342 watts. That is well within ATX spec, that is way more than 150 watts, right? No argument there. And honestly, are you, are you really gonna even try to put 30 amps? So yeah, we're talking about worst case scenario, and we're also talking about maximum uh, capability, but again, way more than 150 watts. All right, well, let's say we're talking about some cheap power supply that nobody knows who made it, but you know, it was a good deal, and it comes with some really cheap cable, uh, cables and connectors. All right, so Molex makes those too. And they're just called regular Minifib and they got a different part number. And you can Google 555, five, five. almost sounds like a phone number for a TV, TV sitcom. 60-001. Now this in the 16, 18 gauge variety uh, made of brass, not phosphor bronze. Um, tin plated or gold plated doesn't matter. I typically use tin plated. Because if you mix tin and gold, you get what's called galvanic corrosion, and the stuff sticks together. So anyway, um, <laughs> 9 amps is the spec, but it is derated for dual pin configurations. So 2 by 3 is actually rated at 8 amps. A funny 8, sorry about that. It almost looks like a G. Um, anyway, so 8 amps, and... Eight times three is 24. Okay, 24 amps. And again, if we take that 24 amps and we multiply that by our 11.4 volts, we have 273.6 watts. Again, way more than 150 watts. So that's just going to show that, you know, we're not talking about the capability of the cable, the terminals, the connector, whatsoever when we're saying 150 watts. It is strictly the expectation of the graphics card from the power supply, right? Um, and a lot of that spec dates back to when power supplies had multiple 12 volt rails, right? So that means each output has an OCP. And the graphics card just simply wants to know, if I pull more than you know, say 12 amps, 12 amps on this connector, am I going to trip OCP? Okay. And if you do, you know, let's say this is rated 12 amps, then you probably don't want to tell the graphics card it can support 150 watts, right? So you don't have the two sense pins on there. You just keep it at six conductors with no sense pins. Okay. So let's move on to the next part of this video.